Welcome back. Before we get into constructing tables in Microsoft Access, there's one more thing that we need to go over, and that's the use of data types. If you've been working with Microsoft Excel for any length of time, you might already be familiar with different categories of data. For example, if you select a column and select Format Cells, it brings up this screen and the first tab is number and it shows you all the different categories of data that can be used and these are actually data types if you click on these you'll see the numbers date and time you'll see the text category and these are data types that determine how data is presented how it's sorted and what kind of operations can be performed on it. For example, the numbers you can perform mathematical operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, whatever. Dates and times you can add and subtract days or even weeks and months from the dates. And text you can determine how many characters a text string has in it. You can search for a specific text within it and it's just presented and sorted differently for each type. So it's important when you're modeling your data you need to select the correct data types for each attribute such as the author's name which would obviously be text and the same with the publisher's name. With a purchased date those would be dates and you would use whatever date data type is available in circulation is a field that indicates if the book is still available for lending or if it's been removed from the collection. That's what's called a Boolean field. It's a yes or no, very simple binary choice, yes or no. The asset tag that you see here is a special case. These are all digits. It looks like a number, but it's not really a number in the sense that we're not going to be performing operations on it. It's just meant to be treated as text, and sometimes if you decide to have a leading zero, as shown here, that's an example of why it would need to be treated as a text field, because otherwise, if you treat it as a number, and let's do that right now, change it to number, and Let's see if we can get it to actually treat that one as a number. Uh, let's t type it in separately then. 02513. It doesn't maintain that leading zero. But if you set it as text, and we'll change it back to a text field, then you can put that leading zero in and it will be maintained. So that's an example of why it's important to select the right data types when you're modeling your data and Access has its own selection of data types and I'll show you that right now. If we go back to the Job Search Plus database we can see again we have the collection of tables, the relationships between them and we have the leads table and I have the leads table open here in design view and you can see that for each attribute for each field within the table it has a data type the lead ID is what's called an auto number that's a special data type for access where it assigns an incremental number for each record within the table so it starts at 1 and goes to 2 and 3 and it'll just keep incrementing that number Record date is of course a date time. You have some text fields in here such as a job title. You have an active field which is a boolean, yes no field. We have a few numbers and we have a couple of specialty data types that only Access uses such as attachments. So every programming environment or every database environment that you might work in has its own selection of data types. Usually they'll have many of them in common such as such as numbers and text, but there will be some differences. Now, once you get familiar with this short list of data types, it's not really a difficult concept to work with. It's just one more thing that you need to consider 
when modeling your data and determining how it's going to be organized. So in our next lesson, we'll start to actually construct some tables in Access, and we'll see how to apply some of these data types to the Collier Library database.